There's another part that's also at the heart of this, and it's another acronym. So the players, oh, sorry about that. Players, it all fits around dynamic media buying optimization, which is this ability, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna throw, I'm, you're gonna have a head spin in a minute with all these acronyms. It's the ability, way of buying and selling digital advertising using taking performance data and audience history. And it's as simple as that. But it doesn't, it's enabling that information and knowing about the users. So as we all of these players that we talked about, I talked about all these DSPs fit into that. And it's quite an exciting part of it. So if ever you hear dynamic media buying optimization, that's really the fundamental part of what we're talking about today. And it is the ability to buy based on audience data, performance history, much more optimized campaign. If we look at some vital statistics, obviously they're happening in the market. It's important to know how they grow, what's happening. We've seen a significant growth. We're expected to grow by another 8% in the end of 2010. DSPs, this shows how vitally important they are, expected to grow by 30%. Ad networks, a lot of people come to me and say, seeing as I represent 27 networks, is it going to be the end of networks? Well, no, not if they actually sort their stuff out. They need to get themselves involved in technology. They need to incorporate technology in their business, they need to involve RTB, but the ad networks are at risk. They dropped down from, the, the share of the market was about 41% last year, it's dropped down to 38%. So we are seeing a decrease in that. 70% of publishers believe 40% of inventory will be booked through ad exchanges, ad networks in the next three years. Again, I can't stress enough that when you come into this landscape and into this trading arena, that's where a lot of the business is being traded on. So understanding ad exchange is critical. Real-time bidding will be around 5%. So it is small, but it, you'll see, it's like anything. You suddenly see these things take off and expect to see that around 30% it could grow to. Because 62% of publishers expected to generate more revenue for them in 2011. Some key questions, actually. This is, um, hopefully this will be useful for you guys. Is to look at some, uh, what brands need to ask. Um, is do I need to continue to use a media buying agency? You know, going back to that original slide, 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 buyers and sellers, there is a thing that says, well, hang on a second, brands could actually miss out that middleman. A brand doesn't need an agency necessarily anymore. It just needs good people at the brand's end who understand how to trade. So another reason for me telling you this is obviously brands are going to be looking to employ people with skills who understand this within a brand because it's critically important because they can buy inventory on a bid basis directly. Equally, publishers need to ask, how should I restructure my internal team of business? How do I control the value of my users? And how do I even put a value on my site anymore? You know, what, what does it matter what my content looks like anymore? Well, it's still critically important because that's what generates the users to your site and the right kind of users. But again, publishers are now looking to restructure their team. People with technical skills in any of these trading, in any of these uh, real-time bidding or real-time selling will be, will be really important. And understanding how they can actually work directly with these, uh, with these technologies. And just as an aside as well, agencies should be asking, which of the new businesses should I have direct chaining relationships with? Am I dealing with less or more people in the buying chain? If I don't have them for DSP, should I be using a Doris, um, RTB? 80, the five major agency holding companies, so you've got the Omnicom, Publicis, WPP, and the three, Aegis is another one, they control 80% of the market. And all five agency holding companies have launched in the last year a DSP. So that shows you which way they're moving. You know, this, they're all trying to control the market, they're trying to control their ability to have some margin clawed back from the actual sell side. But a lot of the smaller agencies are obviously now having to go direct white label DSPs. Um, there's companies from America like App Nexus, which is about to launch over here, which is a specialist in white label RTB. They're actually recruiting at the moment over here. It's a bit soon for you guys, but um, there's a lot of there's a lot of movement coming in, and big technologies coming in. They're going to be doing that. So the agencies are looking at that. But it is complete. It has almost got there are less people in the chain, and there is a concern. What happens to people? You know, what happens to the ability to have all these roles there? And I'm going to come on in a minute to show you how the structure of the teams will change. Are there just some, final, just some final key questions? Everybody should be asking, do these changes mean increased reserve returns or is everybody taking a smaller slice of the pie? 
Well, the answer to that is everybody is taking a smaller slice of the pie. You just, it, it doesn't make sense otherwise. There is only, there's, there is that pot of money out there and there's now 12 players all taking their slice, which is why I was saying the, print, the money has to go up because there are increased returns. If you think about a brand, take Adidas. Adidas, you know, by being able to target a, a user that is interested in sport, that is actually, you can tell by their previous history, by retargeting, that they're interested in buying trainers. What you do is every time they go to a site, you can not only bid for that user there, you can use retargeting companies and you can follow that user wherever they go. So if they suddenly then go off to Tesco, they'll be hit by an Adidas ad. If they then go off to Facebook, they'll be hit by an Adidas ad. So they're being tracked all the time. We just It's incredibly big brother behavior out there the ability that they know exactly what you're doing and you are being advertised and marketed to all the time using these technologies. And you have a, you almost have, each of you has an identity being built up about your, how you're using the web and you're being marketed to. So it's a, it is a very big brother out there at the moment. So just the industry is definitely asking, how the new technology-based media buying tools cause the end of branding? Absolutely not. Branding represents 30% still of the market. Uh, the rest is obviously direct response. Branding is always absolutely key. And what, um, what we see in the industry is a lot of emphasis still on brand versus direct response. Internet, the digital media has always been received, received as di direct response. We shot ourselves in the foot 15 years ago when we said, ours is the only truly monitorable medium. You know, if you're reading a newspaper, how can you tell if somebody's looked at your ad? Well, we can online, we can tell you how many users looked at it, clicked on it, and made a purchase. Well, we shot ourselves in the foot slightly with that because suddenly we were labelled with just DR and actually branding does work within digital as well. Okay, and who is going to lose? The publisher, the networks, the agencies or the brand? Hopefully, nobody will you lose, but there has to be every single one of them has got to get their heads around what's happening and be able to understand how it affects their business because otherwise you're going to see some drop off. Now, I've been through the dot-com crash I was, um, I was saying to Fiona, I've been made redundant three times in the last 14 years. I've made countless people redundant. It's the nature of our industry. But the people that live are going to lose are those that just don't, that don't jump on board, that don't incorporate and that don't move forward because nobody can stand still. It is the fastest moving industry that you could possibly work in. And for that, it is fantastic. And I can highly recommend it. But it comes at a price if you don't get the right from it. Um, just as this is what I wanted to talk to you, hopefully this is useful for you. This is potentially our brand's team. So this again, let's use the example of Nike. At Nike, this is what you could end up having. Is that you'd have a publisher account management team that would work with the real-time selling products and work with the SSPs and the publishers. You'd have an ad operations team. Ad operations is where you're actually fundamentally delivering the ads. And they're the ones who have a lot of power. Ad operations people are like gold dust now. So if that's an area that's really, really important, if you are getting, if you want to get into that, is it used to be seen as a little bit of a set, um, playing second fiddle to the ad sales people and the editorial. But ad operations are the ones that know all the systems. They're the ones who are looking at the bids, placing the bids, delivering the ads, looking at the responses of that, changing it and varying it, making variances on it. The agency account team would still deal with the DSPs and would choose, but that's when it might still be that they deal with, directly with an ad agency for branding, but they could equally deal direct to the DSPs. So again, I'm showing how a brand team could look without the use of uh, agencies by bringing it all in-house. If I was an agency, currently the agency team, just to let me explain to you, you have media buyers, you still have the media buying planning team, and you have creative teams. Um, and you have people, so if I'm a salesperson at a publisher, media sales team, I go and talk to a account planner buyer and I sell directly to them. It's me selling to them. And what we're actually saying is, get rid of that. I would totally get rid of media sales people on the agency side within a publisher and I would get rid of media of planner buyers in an agency. I would still keep brand planner and buyers, people on the creative buying team, those that are doing big campaigns, but I would bring in a dynamic media buying optimization team that would then be able to work with that. And they'd still be skilled, they're not just all techies, they'd be skilled in understanding how this all works, but you don't necessarily need that planner and buyer and media sales representatives working together. So there's a lot of roles, obviously, that you can see within that. And just finally, on the punch side, if it was to work like that, again, you'd get rid of your sales people on the agency sales side and replace it with a dynamic media buying operations team. 
And as you can see, so many, everybody links it 